unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hallelujah. Today I wanted to talk about the blessing, right? The Bible says that the blessing of God, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Praise God. The blessing the Bible says of God, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If we open our Bibles, Proverbs 10 and 22, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Somebody shout hallelujah. The blessing of God, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. It maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. That's the blessing of God. It makes you rich. And he addeth no sorrow. Now, when you read that scripture, and it says that the blessing of God, of the Lord, it maketh rich, okay? He's not just simply talking about what God pronounces over you, but everything that comes to you by God. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's not necessarily saying everything he has only spoken, but there are things probably that you have not heard or seen or heard God directly speak. Are you hearing me? For example, in 2018, if you go in Scripture, you might not find internet, okay? But in there, there are things, even in present day, that happen in our lives that you might not necessarily find written in Scripture, verbatim, okay? But they are of God. Are you hearing me? But whatever is of God, whether he has said it directly to you, or he has written it in scripture, or he has established it as a pattern of principle, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Are you following what I'm saying? You see, what is a blessing? A blessing is a, it, it's an invocation of, of the divine nature of God to do you good. Okay? To do you good. To prosper you. To give you success in a certain field or area that you so desire or that he so feels led. And there are different ways by which the blessings of God come. One of them, of course, the primary place of the blessing is when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior Jesus. Okay? When we receive the Lordship of Jesus, we receive the blessing of the life of God. Hallelujah. And that life gives us everything. Because it positions us to the submission of the life and the name and the person of Jesus Christ. We submit to that. Uh, we are blessed already because we are believers. And the Bible says, and they are blessed with believing Abraham. You understand? So why are we blessed? Because we are believers. Okay. Also, blessings can come when we do certain principles written in Scripture. You understand? For example, your tithes, your offering, helping, forgiving, loving. There are certain patterns and principles that come through Scripture. And those are there to release the blessing of God upon your life. Are you following what I'm saying? There's another way for us to walk in the blessing of God. But today I wanted to talk about a very notable blessing that many people ignore and some don't even understand and therefore have not enjoyed or experienced personally in their lives as they ought to or some deserve more of it but they do not know how to respond or react to that kind of blessing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11 we're going to read from verses 20 to 22. 
Hebrews 11 verses 20 to 22. Okay? The Bible says, By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying man, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his stuff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. Okay? God in Hebrews 11, from verses 20 to 21, he's talking about Isaac blessing Jacob and Esau. He's talking about Jacob blessing the sons of Joseph. He's talking about Joseph blessing Israel and also giving a commandment concerning his bones. And the Bible says all of that was by faith. By faith. The blessing of a father on your life is important. Somebody shout hallelujah. The blessing of a father on your life is important. Whether physical father or spiritual father. The blessing of your father on your life is important. It is key. It is fundamental in the Christian life. You have to understand how the principle of blessing works. I made a mention one time in scriptures, and I said, there are things that God gives fathers and does not give children. There are things that are for fathers that can only take effect in children when they are passed on by fathers. That is why I told you, as a ministry, we don't want to invest in associates. We want to invest in sons and daughters because we are dealing with a spiritual inheritance. Are you hearing me? That thing you read in scripture where the Bible says, I recall of the faith that was in your mother and your grandmother and is in thee, Timothy, also. There are words that woman spoke over her daughter and the daughter in turn, Eunice, spoke over Timothy. And Timothy walks in that generation of blessing because he understood the transgenerational blessing. And here transgenerational, I'm not only talking about the age of an individual, but that even the person you submitted to, you're in a different level. You see, some of you error. We don't correct you, but you do error. You can't come and bless me. You can say, God bless you, apostle. But you can't say, I bless you, apostle. How do you, how do you bless me? You understand? How do you bless me? <laughs> Unless you're up here. You can say, God bless you, man of God. That's right. I pray the Lord blesses you. That's right. You are a blessed man. That's right. But you can't say, I bless you. You, you can't bless your spiritual authority. You can't bless your biological mother and father. You can't. Are you hearing me? The Bible is clear on who the blesser is. Very, very clear. The Bible is very clear on who the blesser is. Read it, Hebrews 7, 7. It says, without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. You are blessed. Okay? Now, there used to, there's been a sort of culture that has sort of emanated from the western part of Africa. Okay, Nigeria, Ghana, where you find these guys and say, you are blessed. Okay? You are blessed, you see? Now, let me explain that. For example, if you, if you found uh, a or or a boy, and he says, you're blessed. Amen. Why? By all right, he's a father in faith. Are you hearing me? They pick it from Adeboyo. Even Bufani guys who don't have a grace to bless, they also come and say, you are blessed. Now, some of them don't even know why or where that is coming from. You find the guy says, you are blessed. You are blessed. But you see, they're not proclaiming that you are a blessed man. They feel in their head that they are proclaiming a blessing over you. Over you. You understand what I'm saying? And some of them, I don't know how to, to answer them. I, I simply say, let me assume he's saying that I'm a blessed man. And I say, amen. Otherwise, some of you conflict the ranks. You can't bless your one above you. You can bless God for them. You can... Ask God to bless them, but you can't bless them. Who has understood what I just said? 
Secondly, the blessing of the Father does not exist in a prophetic voice. And I want you to understand that. I am prophetic, but I don't bless you from the prophetic. Are you hearing me? Why? Because this prophetic simply speaks of things to come. It establishes the counsel of God on a man. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in Hebrews, if you read it, he says, by faith, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. He didn't have a spiritual vision. He wasn't speaking as a prophet. No. The Bible says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. The blessing of your father is by faith. Who understands what I'm saying? I don't need to see in the spirit to bless you. I just need to know the way of the word to bless you. You understand? We now later understand in Hebrews that when Isaac called Jacob and Esau, when he blesses them, when, for example, Jacob steals the birthright of Esau, right? In scripture is clear that Isaac did not wake up and he got a vision of everything to speak over Esau. No. By faith, he just spoke things to come. And all of those things that he spoke came to pass because he had the right and authority to bless. A father doesn't need to get a vision to bless you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And he doesn't need to be prophetic to bless you. He just needs to have enough faith to bless you. If he's a man of faith, he can bless you. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Who understands what I'm saying? That means if a man has enough word in his spirit, as a father, he can bless you. And everything he pronounces over you. You know why I'm saying that? I see people who don't understand the word saying, let me go and look for a man who can prophesy on my life. A father who can prophesy on my life. Listen, even that simple pastor who preaches a simple service on Sunday and doesn't even demonstrate power, if that man has a word in his spirit, he can bless you. He can bless somebody concerning things to come and they come to pass because the blessing of fathers to sons is of faith. But some babes think that you have to be in the prophetic to bless. I'm not against the prophetic. I prophesy in some of you. If I call you and bless you as a father in the prophetic, I'm simply exercising what the Lord has instructed me to do. Are you hearing me? But my blessing on you is not limited to the prophetic. That if I'm not prophesying or if I'm not in the spirit, that day I can't bless you. No. Even the most bored eye on your father can bless you if he knows God. And certain things are not going to come on prayer mountains, saints. They are simply going to come from certain men speaking words upon your life. Take those words seriously. When a man who knows God says you're going to fail, he doesn't need to be a prophet. Can I say it again? When a man who knows God tells you that you're going to fail, when you know that the man has enough word in his spirit and he says that you're going to fail, he does not need to be a prophet. You will fail. If he says you're not going to succeed, and you're sure he knows the word, <laughs> he might not quote the scripture, but he has looked at you and compared you with everything in the word and concluded, this scripture is the sure word of prophecy. There are people I don't have to talk to, but when I look at them, I know they are going to fail. I pray they don't, but when I look at every principle in the word, they are going to fail. Oh, don't cast. I have not cast them. You have not heard me say it. But me, when I read the word, I am sure they are going to fail. Because they floated every principle according to scripture. Or the major principles according to scripture. Are you hearing me? That is why we always tell people, invest in the word of God. Take time to read the word of God. Because many of the mistakes we make are because we don't know the word of God. And what it says, if we knew the word of God, 
You see, many years ago, many, many years ago, probably five, six, seven years ago, I remember I was in the living room, and I walked to my father, my sister was there too. And I told my father these words in the presence of my mother. I told him that I am not looking for your inheritance. Eh? I'm not looking at your inheritance. Eh? Mbo, now when you die, leave me this, leave my sisters that. Make sure you remember me in your will. You understand what I'm saying? And some of you are waiting for your parents to die. You're there counting. You understand? <laughs> you're broke and then you're waiting for your parents to die. Oh, you're waiting for something to happen to the man of God for you to walk in the blessing of God upon your life. Mama, they won't die. You understand? But I walked to that man and I straightened the eye. I knelt down on my knees. No, actually, before I knelt, I actually sat or sit on the chair with my sister. My mom was there. And I said, my father, you, but the Lord has blessed you. You have properties, you have lands, and that's beautiful. But for me, I do not want an inheritance from you. If you do, you will do it because you're my father. But I want you to know even when you get to the time of departing that I will never demand any inheritance. I will never even touch anything of the things your sweat and blood have had. I just ask for this one favor. Bless me as a father will bless a son. And he stood up. And my sister was there also. She said, me too. And he said, go on your knees. He says, go on your knees now. My mom was there. He stretched forth his hands and spoke words upon me and my sister. From that day on, I don't expect an inheritance from my biological father. He gave it to me that day when he spoke words. And what happened in my finances in one year? <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to make some of you lose peace. You understand? My father will tell you from that day on, I have never asked or demanded anything from him. The words he spoke were enough for me. Because I know what it means for a father to speak over his child from the heart. You understand what I'm saying? There are people, even us spiritual men can't put hands on. Because the spirit tells you don't lay hands on her. Don't. I've had it several times. Where the spirit tells you don't lay hands on that person. Because they don't see you a certain way. And they can't see me as God a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? I wish some of you have been there when certain men were speaking on my life. You'd understand what I mean. Every time that man said, I want to pray for you, I'll go on my knees. Whether I'm there present or not, I don't just go and pray and say, Jesus, thank you. No, no, no. Because I know what his words can do in my life. I know it. I'll go on my knees. And I receive everything God has prepared for me. I mean, what distance is there? <laughs> How many seconds? The years of struggle and strife and turmoil and... Kubona abona, then things hit you left, right, and center. And I'm dying for what? Distance. Praise God. That's the instance sometimes of the benedictory prayers that are spoken over the ministry. When I say you are blessed, my goodness. Don't just say, Amen. You understand? Some of you, you don't get it. You don't get it. And in every generation, the anointing increases. If you read, for example, in Genesis 48, when Jacob was blessing Joseph, in verses um, 15, listen to how he speaks. He says, he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, listen, and the God, now he's saying, which fed me all my life long unto this day, comma, he summons the angel which redeemed him from all evil. Are you hearing me? Then he starts to bless the sons of Joseph. He's saying, even the way God has walked with me, I can speak it upon your life. Even the angel that was with me to guard me from evil, I can speak that angelic upon your life. These things go way deeper than simply blessing you. No. This is a man of God blessing his son. And God hits to every word spoken. He tells Joseph the God he's been relating with. And then he starts to bless Ephraim and Manasseh. 
and every word he spoke came to pass. Are you hearing me? Jacob in 49 explains that transgenerational blessing. And he says that the blessing of your father has exceeded and has gone above all your progenitors. All my progenitors, he says. You know, the blessing that is upon me, as Jacob, he says, was bigger than the blessing Abraham pronounced over Isaac or Isaac, my father, pronounced over me. And now he's saying, I'm speaking the same blessing on you. It's 49, 26 years. He says, the blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. And to the uttermost bands of the everlasting hills, and they shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. And then you see this man speaking, but he's saying, you see, there was a blessing Abraham spoke of Isaac. That blessing is different from the blessing Isaac spoke over me, Jacob speaking. But you see, the blessing on me that I'm putting on Jacob is way bigger than the blessing that Isaac spoke over me, Jacob, and the blessing that Abraham spoke over Isaac. That means, when I'm talking about the transition of ancient oil, things old coming into the newer generation, why I tell you that every new birth comes from an old womb. Jacob positioned himself in understanding that I received of Abraham what was given to Isaac, and I received of Isaac what was given, right, to him. And now, what I carry is bigger than whatever they could have blessed. And this is what I speak on my children. And it sticks up to present day. Do you understand what I'm saying? What am I trying to say? When you hear any sign of blessing from a man of God, receive it. Don't receive it just like, Amen. Don't agree. Uh, receive. Don't agree. Some of you just simply agree. I agree. No. Don't agree. Eh? Amen. Some of you, you say yeah, amen and so be it. No. Receive it. Simply receive it by faith. Are you hearing me? When a man of God is a re like I said, he doesn't need to get a vision to bless you. Don't say, oh, this one is lighter because the way he has spoken it, it seems it wasn't from the closet. No. No, 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 no. By faith, the Bible says he spoke things to come. Things to come by faith. He just carried the substance of the things he was hoping would happen in the lives of his son. And the Lord made it so. Can you believe it? God honored it so. Because the man simply had a substance of things he was hoping for his son. An evidence of things that were not seeable. But he simply proclaims those words over his son. And the blessing comes. Let me tell you why. Do you know why the Bible says, do not touch my anointed? Can I explain that for a moment? If you ever find a man demonstrating power, and you are sure eh, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, how do you know? Eh? That man has an assignment in his life, for that woman, okay? He says, for the Spirit of the Lord has is upon me, for he has anointed me. Okay? He didn't say because he has anointed me. No, he says for he has anointed me. When the anointing is on a man, it means the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. When you see a man or a woman who is anointed by God, God is simply telling you, if you have seen an anointing on him, leave him for me. That's what it means not to touch my anointed. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? There are people who do things sometimes in the gospel, and I've seen some men of God who are funny. But every time I'd want to give an opinion, the Lord tells me, don't touch them. Simply don't touch them. Why? Do you see an anointing on them? Yes, don't touch them. Just don't touch them. Why? Because they're anointed. Simple. Whether the man is what or what, is he anointed? Yes. Don't touch him. Touch a funny guy. But when you meet an anointing, don't touch it. Even when you sit somewhere and you hear people commenting about other men of God, if you are sure that the man is anointed, don't give your opinion. Don't. Don't. Do you understand? Don't. Let me explain why. 
When the Bible says that no weapons fashioned against you, that scripture is for servants of God. That scripture was for servants of God. He says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Did you hear that? And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, listen, thou, huh? thou shall condemn. Thou, who? He's talking to his servants. That if anybody rises to judge you, you can condemn them. You understand what I'm saying? And he says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness, those servants, is of me. I'm the one who imputes righteousness on them. You're not the one who makes them righteous. You're not the one who makes them unrighteous either. Nothing you say can make a man of God unrighteous. Because you have not put righteousness on them. Are you following what I'm saying? Nothing you say can make a woman of God unrighteous. Because you, you did not put righteousness on them. She says, moreover, he commanded them saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. He commanded, he told you, once you see a man or a woman of God that is anointed, that you see an anointing on them. You see, let me, let me give you an example. I have sons in the ministry who are anointed. And I'm their father. Are you hearing me? And I know that I've been endowed with more weight spiritually over them, even by the grace and right God has given me to pastor them. But because I see a certain anointing, God, even if he has done something, there is a way I don't touch him. Yet he's my son. I have released sons who are rebellious. But if you know a son who have released and is rebellious and he had an anointing on him, you will bear me one witness. I have never spoken about them. Not on my altar. Not in my private conversation. I don't speak about them. Yet I even have the right to pronounce certain words over them by faith. I can even condemn them. Some of them I hear they even live and talk about me. But I don't talk about them. Because I see a little anointing on some. A little. So I say, God, you anointed that ka young man. Eh? Let him talk about me. But I'm not going to touch that kalita anointing. It's ka small, but let me not touch it. If I fail to agree with you and you anointed, I will release you peacefully as an anointed person. But there are things I will not speak against you or about you, even if I know them. There are secrets of men of God we know in town. Some are lies, actually, 100% lies. And some are true. And some of us are spiritual to hear God on it. Because me, until God tells me, it doesn't matter what you tell me about an individual. If God hasn't spoken to me, you're wasting your time. God has to talk to me too. Yeah, because remember in Proverbs 29, if a ruler listens to lies, his servants become wicked. I don't want to bring wickedness in you. You just wake up now, your heart is wicked. Remember, you don't know that it has begun from Apostle Grace. When you listen to lies, you release wickedness in the ministry. And some men of God are quick to listening. You foolish talk. Gundi stole. What? He stole. I can't believe it. Can you believe Gundi stole? Those are babies. A ruler cannot hearken to lies, and all his servants will become wicked. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Now, when the Bible says, do not touch my anointed, you understand? Like I told you, for me, there are people over the years who have done things, men of God, and I know that this man is wrong. But does he have an anointing on him? Or a good anointing? Yes. I didn't call him. Why? Because his righteousness is of God. If God gets to a point and he says he's going to put him on full stop, he puts him on full stop. If God sustains him still, that's him and his God. Tell me about what I know, but don't tell me about what God hasn't told me and showed me concerning a man. Don't. It ain't mean people don't come to me. They do. 
But when they do, I tell them, let me pray about it. And sometimes some of you notice that I don't act on the words you tell me. Not because I don't want to act. But when I'm dealing with an anointed man, I deal differently. I deal differently. Even when I'm annoyed, there's a way I can't talk to Pastor Zach. Yet he is a son. If I blamed him, he would gracefully receive my rebuke. But there's a way I don't talk to him. Because when I see him demonstrate power, I also recognize that he has God on him. Touch not. Okay? Why do I say that? Because you see, some of you, it's the things you have spoken about these men of God in your chamber. It's the conversation you have sat and spoken about these men of God in your private conversations. And you think you're going to bypass that and go to a prayer mountain or some random man of God and then he speaks on your life and everything changes. It's not going to happen. Because if that man goes in prayer and he says, God, I condemn every mouth that has spoken about me. Mama, Mama, you're gone. You're gone. When the Bible says, cast not the king, even in your heart, you know what it means. <laughs> Don't even have funny thoughts about a man of God in your heart. Don't even conceive it in your heart. You understand? When he says, do not cast the king in your heart, or a man of God, a ruler, or a, someone, even the thoughts I have towards my men of God matter. Even those in my ministry who are below me. There are thoughts I can't have on them. I cannot have them. I cannot have them. I cannot have them. I cannot have them. Ecclesiastes 10.20. You know why I'm saying that? Because the same person you're casting in your heart is blessing you on the altar. <laughs> How is that even going to work out on your life? Do you understand what I'm saying? What are you doing to your life? What are you doing to your life? What are you doing to your life? But there are things even in our circle we don't touch. Not because we don't care and don't want to do the right thing or the wrong, no, or that sometimes see certain things. That, no. If I'm to talk to my man of God in this ministry, I will call him and tell him, Pastor Masasi, stop taking coffee. I will have that conversation with him. And after having that conversation with him, you will not hear me now going to Pastor Zach telling Pastor Zach, I told Masasi to leave coffee. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because Pastor Masasi is anointed. He is anointed by God. You attacking him means that you are attacking everything God has ordained in him to do. That means that you are setting yourself against God in his plan to use Masasi. That means that you are setting yourself against God. Any life that is destroyed because of what you have spoken on that man of God is on you. Any blood that you will divert out of the gospel by speaking on that man of God is on you. And you will surely pay for his blood because the Lord hates the shedding of innocent blood. Some of you think it's just a physical killing. No. Some of you kill people spiritually when you mislead them through foolish conversations. And then you also raise your hands and say, bless me. <laughs> or that when they are blessing, you receive it. No. You are setting yourself on a course that will destroy you forever. When you meet, not only Apostle Grace, even when you get out of here and you go anywhere and you find a man who is anointed, it doesn't mean you need to agree with him. I don't need to agree with him. I don't need to have a relationship with him. You don't even need to be their friend. When they touch them, don't touch them. You don't touch. If you have seen an anointing on him, don't touch that man. Don't. Me, I don't touch anointed men, even if they are wrong. And men, some of us, we work with men who can provoke you. And every time you want to open your version too, and also tell it, and say, but even me now, eh? since they've spoken about me this way, let me also give my version of story. I'm just giving my side such that even me, I'm understood. And the Lord who told me, Rebecca Grace, 
But God, the man is saying this, the man is saying this, yet me I can even prove. He's saying things without proof. Me I can even open and then I even prove the things is, that the things that me I have on him. Me, me, I even have this, I even have this proof, I even have the WhatsApps, I have the what I have the messages, I even have the email. We can even call so and so. I have eyewitnesses. I, God is is misleading people about me. And God tells you, why? Have you seen him demonstrate power? Yes, don't touch him. He's mine. Let me deal with him. Mwe. Some of you don't know what it means to carry an anointing. You don't even have a clue. That long suffering and patience of God over you when you even abuse men of God, don't confuse it for meaning that you have the right to speak on a woman or a man of God. No. It's simply God's long suffering and forbearance because he wills that you don't perish. But there is always a day of reckoning. In fact, somewhere in Psalms, as the Bible says, a man can even start prospering. Now, at the end of that man, God can even leave you to be found on a man. And then you continue. And then one day, the Bible says, you only go up for that fall. When a man is wicked, eh? that man is raised only for him to fall a hard way. So some people are wicked and they continue to prosper. But it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. Two years, yes. You can even say, me, I'm successful. I'm even driving a car. God is positioning you so that when your fall is, is there, it's very hard. Everybody can see it. So when the fall comes, that fall comes so hard on you. I tell when now you've entered the grace gospel. You think that because you're under grace, you can touch certain people. Listen, it might not even be me, but you see a sister, she has issues. But you see she's anointed. But, but are you following what I'm saying? So you can even go up and raise. A very interesting story. There's a man of God in Kampala. This guy was a success many years ago. Everybody talked about this man. Everybody talked about this man. Everybody talked about this man. He really did a great job in faith and teaching ministries and giving and many things. So he was really a household name in the early 90s, I think, into, into the mid-90s, coming into 2000. And then some two random journalists gets a story on this man. Hmm? And then this journalist starts writing, this man is homosexual. What? He's a homosexual. He does this. He does this. He's a homosexual. Almost every two, three weeks, the tabloids were releasing an article on this man being gay, this man of God being gay. And the man kept writing, he kept writing. Then he got some stories. Some of you probably know the story because it was in the news. He even got stories on the man in Rwanda. That man in Rwanda, he stole Smile 700 million from orphans. He did this to orphans. He did this to that. And this man, he was prospering even as he was writing. He continued prospering even as he was writing. And this man of God's ministry was greatly affected. Greatly affected. Before we know it, that guy sometime also was probably in some uh, ministries. He, he was a, a, a top official sometime in the security organ of this nation. And so he used many contacts and he destroyed this man of God's ministry badly. He was literally the ringleader that was bold to face this man. You know, some of you are foolish. Let me use that word. Someone says, how can you continue doing this and then you say, touch not my anointed. Oh, does that mean they're not anointed? Because you said it. Oh, does their witness disqualify them from the anointing? It still says that they're the Lord's anointed. They are still the Lord's anointed. Don't question God's counsel in why he chose them and he didn't choose you. Who knows the difference? So, this man, of course, in writing the stories, many of them, if not all, later were proved to be deception and lie. But of course to some people, if somebody says something, it is true. Or if somebody testifies and says it is true. Then before you know it, he starts involving police. He starts sending motions through newspapers that they should arrest the man of God. He should be behind bars. He should be behind bars. Over the years, this man thought God wasn't watching, but God was simply being patient with him. And he didn't know. But he was storming up. And at the time when he becomes a celebrated man in the nation, something happens and they put that man behind bars. 
He leaves the man of God he was fighting still preaching. But he has affected the man's ministry. And all the blood that was misled is on him. He goes in prison, serves for many years. It's probably more than 10 or so years. They released him last year. He was just up here at Nakawa Crossing. And the bike hit him to death. After being released. Immediately, like literally, you serve prison up to the end of your prison. You're released. The week you're released, you're crossing the road and they crush you to death. And the man of God he was writing about is still alive. Preaching the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you kill yourself? Yeah? Why do you kill yourself? The tongue that can bless you can change your course <laughs> and speak a word on you that can change your life forever. Don't take them for granted because they are humble. You don't know it all. And soon when I start teaching about the fold, you'll understand why persecution comes. Some of you say, oh, 30 fold, 60, 100. You read 30, 60, 70. Go to the 100 folds. The man who shall lose house, wife, children, lands for God. He shall receive back hand, uh, lands, wives, children, properties, houses, 100 folds. And he says, comma, and persecution. Some of you, you're, you're not yet persecuted because your caliber in the spirit is... Your yogurt. You're, you're simply yogurt. You're, you're nothing. When success starts to come on your way, you'll be amazed at the things that will be spoken on you. You'll sit in your room and say, but why are people saying these things? Why are these things happening? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. But I want people. And we are going all the way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't underestimate the man who blesses or the women who bless you. Because if their tongue turns against you, if their tongue turns against you, even if you go to prayer mountain and fast for years and days, you might never be able to change certain consequences. I'm not scaring you. I'm just trying to mature some of you. So when we bless you, receive it. Receive it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. If you have spoken about me, I've forgiven you. Have what? Now sort it with your God. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on. I want to bless you. I want to bless you. I just want to bless you. Praise God. Now you understand what the blessing of God does. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless your bread and water. I bless your going in and going out. I bless the increase of everything you have. I declare and declare that you will not see plunder in your life. You will see multiplication, increase. You will change. You will go upward and upward. Only great things await you. In Jesus' name. Send the message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenero at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.